of my talk. Uh, securing sensitive data, a strange game. Sorry, I kind of ripped off the War Games movie there. Uh, the only way to win with securing sensitive data, particularly credit cards that I deal with a lot, is not to play, not to try and do it. Uh, I'm Jeff Elliott. I've got uh, you know, a bunch of three-letter acronyms, four-letter acronyms, all that kind of stuff. Uh, that said, I'm not an InfoSec rock star. I don't have a, a Tumblr or a Tutu, uh, which we all know those things are required from the video. Uh, I'm an associate director with Protivity. Uh, I'll put that in there because we're hiring, so if anybody wants uh, wants a new job, see me or any of my guys that would rather be fishing. Um, the one uh, credential that I will disclose is I've got seven years uh, PCI QSA, which uh, I've been around the block a few times and seen the problems that can happen when you try and secure sensitive data. Fine print, things I'm going to recommend, do them at your own risk. Many of them are expensive. Uh, if you do it right, that's a great thing. If you don't do it right, somebody will get mad at you. There will be some products listed later. They're just representative samples from a Google search. No uh, no sponsorship of any of that. Um, you need to choose what uh, works best in your environment. Uh, my mentor thought I should put that I'm not a lawyer. I'm a consultant. I'm probably not your consultant, but we can probably work something out. <laughs> so the issue um, with a lot of trying to secure sensitive data is uh, really around money, right? Um, credit cards are money, and thieves want them. Thieves like money. I uh, read an article in, it was actually a couple years ago now, in Wired Magazine, 2011. There's a town in Romania where they had to build luxury car dealerships because the hackers that are stealing data wanted to buy luxury cars, and they were going other places to do it. So they built luxury car dealerships in this little town in Romania so they could keep the money there. So we all know credit cards are big business. We just saw another hack at uh, P.F. Chang's. They, they gave us more information about yesterday. Criminals want money. Like I said, they it's uh, easier, I guess, to do that than to do honest work. And merchants spend piles of money trying to achieve what they call compliance. Some standard PCI standard, some other standard tells them you have to get Compliant, you have to pass all these tests. Little compliance math, the sum of all the compliance pain and cost that you incur, we all know, I've heard it in the two talks before this, does not equal security. Compliance is not security. Security is security. Compliance is just compliance. So, you know, the issue is money. Everybody wants it. We spend all this money on it. We still have all these data breaches. And, you know, way too much. Again, we just had P.F. Chang again, all the ones we've heard about in the last couple of years. The problem is the money, right? It's, it's the people want to steal it, and there's just no way to really stop them from doing that. So I wanted to tell uh, three stories just from my experience uh, as a QSA, and these are really typical. So I'll, I'll tell three specific ones. I won't name any names. I'll protect the innocent. But this stuff happens all the time. We see it every engagement we do. Uh, the first one that we see a lot is good crypto is really hard to do. If you're not buying you know, a solution from some vendor implementing exactly the way that they said it, that's been tested by the community, been in a whole bunch of different environments, and really been vetted out, you think you can do it yourself. And that's not just invent an algorithm, right? We all know we shouldn't invent an algorithm. It's even the implementation. So I had a client that we were doing an assessment, and they fought and fought and fought, and they said, our crypto is good. It's RC4 crypto. There's nothing wrong with it. Prove there's something wrong with it. And so we spent some time, looked at it, and said, OK, well, you know, we know the problems with stream ciphers are key reuse. If you do reuse the keys, we got a big problem. If you don't reuse the keys, interesting how you're doing that, but let's figure that out. So we go through talk to the administrators, the people who built it, and said, okay, how do you do encryption? They said, well, we first generate this really, really long random key with all this good entropy, and it's pseudo-random, but you know, really long thing and really great. Okay, great. Then what do you do? Well, then we encrypt the data. No, 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 no. You're not getting off that easy. How do you encrypt the first credit card number that you see? Well, we grab the chunk off the front of that key, 
and then we run it through the algorithm, which we you know, found on the internet and wrote in our own language. Uh, that actually seemed to be okay. And then we encrypt the data. Okay, great. Now the second credit card comes in, what do you do? Well, we you know, get some key material and we encrypt the data. No, no. What key material? Well, that key material off the front, again. Okay, do you ever change that key material? Do you ever get anything other than that first chunk off the front? No. Okay, here's a spreadsheet, and your crypto is broken. They changed to AES, so that was a good thing. And it was properly implemented. The next one, some people are going to yell at me. Uh, the PCI Council has been saying for a long time that segmentation is isolation and segmentation is not controlled access. Now, in modern day IT environments trying to actually run a business, this is really painful. You really cannot properly segment modern environments like the military can, because they have all of yours and my money, do that in a merchant type environment successfully. There's always going to be something that has to talk to some in scope system, and a PCI council says that that is therefore going to have to be in scope. People are, we talk about there's a new PCI DSS version 3.0 comes effective here. It's actually effective now. You have to do it starting first of the next year. And people are freaking out because they're like, well, what's this noise I'm hearing about we have to actually do isolation and not just segmentation like we did it before and kind of let a few things through? Well, they've been saying, they've been using the word isolates since six years ago in PCI DSS 1.0 or 1.1. Nobody wanted to hear it. Nobody wanted to do it because it's really hard to do in a merchant environment. So what do we do? We do as well as we can, right? We limit things. Well, some people do better at that than others. We limit things as much as possible, and then the rest gets allowed through. And we try and talk about how there's no real risk there. They continue to say it in all versions up through current. Jericho, however, was right. We had the uh, PCI scoping uh, group several years ago. Some of those slides were in that kind of beginning thing. Uh, and the purpose of that was to try and resolve this and bring sanity to scoping. Uh, the problem is exactly what Jericho says here. It was a colossal waste of time and energy. We, there were like 50 people, hours and hours and hours and days spent on this thing, wrote this paper. PCI Council would not let us release it. And they let us release it as an open source document. So they wouldn't sign off on it like they do most of their special interest groups. And when I first saw Jericho's tweet, because of all the work that I'd put into that thing, I was kind of upset. It's like, well, what do you mean? I, I don't get it. Because I still was kind of drinking that Kool-Aid if you could actually segment an environment. Then what happened is I started watching. We have a really good uh, pen test group. And I started watching what they were doing, and they're practically unstoppable, as probably any good pen tester is, right? In these segmented environments where you don't isolate traffic, you don't isolate systems that have data that thieves want from other systems that don't, there's always another way in. I watched uh, recently my pen test lab, went after uh, an engagement on a client. It was an external pen test. They found a vulnerable device on the perimeter, hacked that. From there, they got into Active Directory, got domain admin. From there, they started crawling around the network some more. And they found a server that had credit card data in it. And the client's response was, actually, the database below is QA. But it's part of PCI, contains credit card info according to our sysadmins. So we can consider that you've reached your goal. We'll wait for your report. And this happens over and over again. Segmentation does not work. The third one I'd like to talk about is there's these humans. They're always getting involved in our security. We could have perfect security if it was just the systems and no humans, I think. But we do. We have them everywhere. So what do they do? 
So this slide here is an in case uh, slide from in case forensic, and uh, I had to blur the credit card numbers. Sorry, <laughs> you won't be able to actually use those. Um, but what this was was we had a, a client. We did an assessment. We we're just doing a have we been breached assessment. Is there any kind of clue that anything bad has happened? We don't know it. Nobody's told. Secret Service hasn't knocked on our door. There's no kind of announcement, anything like that. But take a look around and see what's going on. Okay. So we did a bunch of tests, and we ran forensic images on some systems. Kind of the thing that they're supposed to do every year before we come to do their PCI assessment, right? So we did that. We sent that off to our uh, lab in New York. And those guys went through it, and they said, well, there's credit card numbers in there. No, they're not really so good with the PCI. Uh, they were right. It was credit card numbers. But more than that, it was track data. Track data, now you know why I blurred it. <laughs> with track data, you could make new cards. So that is prohibited for, to be stored because of that uh, by PCI. And it was all over their systems. So we found it, talked to them about cleaning it up. And they said, well, you know, we figured out where the problem was. It was the help desk. The help desk said, but I needed to debug a production problem. And I forgot to turn it off when I was done. <laughs> so it's just writing this data all over the disk. That was fun when we did this year's report on compliance for them. Because we triple checked that. But there is some hope. Right? We don't have to just live with all this data getting breached all the time. There's a potential solution. Potential solution, my opinion, is point-to-point -point encryption, commonly called P2PE. Um, and I put tokenization as a separate item because I don't really care about tokenization. If you need it in order to do things like fraud prevention, uh, customer tracking, those kind of things, and you can't do that on the encrypted values for whatever reason, fine. Do tokenization, doesn't matter to me. So, you know, how do we go about doing that? So the PCI Council has an FAQ, which is kind of our Bible, so we'll have a reading uh, from the sacred guidance today. <laughs> you, did you all bring your PCI Bibles? No? Okay, well, I got mine. So, PCI FAQ number 1086 says, is encrypted cardholder data in scope for PCI DSS? And the key part of this here is in the yellow. The entity in possession of the encrypted data does not have access to the clear text cardholder data or the encryption process, nor do they have the ability to decrypt the encrypted data and does not have the cryptographic keys anywhere in the environment and none of their systems, processes, or personnel have access to the environment where cryptographic keys are located, nor do they have the ability to retrieve them, then up above in the blue, if and only if that's the case, and that gets validated, then that doesn't have to be considered cardholder data. Now, I think that when they were doing that, they were probably thinking about tapes at Iron Mountain, right? Because nobody has the keys to the tapes at Iron Mountain, so Iron Mountain probably doesn't need to be in scope for your PCI assessment. But what it also means is as technology improved over the years, we got to where we can do encryption in ways that all these criteria are met. The key elements, is TLDR here, the whole FAQ and all the documentation is up on the PCI Council's website. The key things are there can be no keys in the merchant environment. This means that give me the best pen tester, the best hacker, doesn't matter, give them all the IDs, all the credentials, give them domain admin, give them Unix admin, give them root, whatever. There's no keys for them to get. You have to, in order to accomplish that, you have to encrypt at the point of interaction, POI, using a tamper-resistant security module or a hardware security module. Those sound really technical, but it's any modern pin pad. You also then have to get that data back out the other end of the system and only ever decrypt the data at a third-party service provider or at the bank. Therefore, there are no keys in the environment. There's some data flying around, but it's encrypted, and your best attack is brute force. Unless you can get into the TRSM, and that's what TRSMs are built to prevent. But there are only three, you might tell me, 
point-to-point -point encryption solutions, if you go to the PCI Council's website, linked there on the bottom, there are only three you get. Bluefin PayConnects, EPS Total Care, and Solve Data Shield. Now, has anybody seen any of these implemented? Yeah, I pinged my list of a couple hundred people and neither have we. But, so what does that mean? Well, the way that, that uh, PCI works, it's really, it's not a law, right? It's contracts. So the PCI Council tells us in another FAQ that merchants using encryption solutions that are not included on the Council's list of three validated P2PE solutions should consult with their acquirer or payment brand about the use of these solutions. The way PCI works is the payment brands, Visa, MasterCard, all them, contract with acquiring banks, and they say, acquiring banks, you have to make sure that all your merchants maintain PCI compliance at all times, and then report that up to us, and that's how that's going to work. Well, then acquiring banks, in order to comply with that, contract with merchants and say, merchant, you have to maintain PCI compliance at all times. You have to meet all the requirements, and you have to do whatever level of assessment based on how many transactions you're doing. You have to do all that stuff. So that's, that's how the legality of all this works. That's how people are forced to comply with PCI. It's all these contracts. So you know, restating that, the acquiring banks enforce the compliance requirements on merchants. And the acquiring banks are accepting alternative solutions. And sometimes they sell them. So there are far more than three potential solutions that I've seen. This is just a quick Google search. There are more than this on the list. Again, none of these are sponsored. I don't I know some of them, some of them I just found can also do this work. But you might say, well, my database only takes 16 digit numerics, or my data entry fields, or my you know, whatever part of your system only takes numeric 16 digit. And you know, we all thought crypto made big, ugly, long hexadecimal strings with equal signs on them when they're base 64 encoded. So th there's also available uh, format preserving encryption. What format preserving encryption does is it keeps doing the crypto until it finds a value that meets the format of the original data. So if you have a 16 digit numeric, it keeps doing this until it finds a 16 digit numeric and then that's what the crypto value is. Why does that work? Because you can back it out and do the same thing backwards and get back to the original number. There are potential drawbacks. Here we are again with money. This can be expensive, right? Everybody wants their little hand in your pie. So there's the cost for equipment. There's setup costs. There's, you know, the, the real big one is there are ongoing transaction costs. Whoever's doing this for you wants a little taste of every transaction that you do. So it can be expensive. The next one's what I like to call data jail. These providers would just love to get into an arrangement, providers or banks would love to get into an arrangement where they have your data and you can't get it back. If you want to change providers, oh, that's kind of too bad because you didn't think about that on the front end. So what you want to do with that and some of the other stuff on the money is make sure that your contract negotiations are handled properly on the front end so that you have terms in there for, you know, what's the exit strategy, how do we get the data back out, you know, how do we cap fees, how do we do, you know, you know reduce setup costs, those kind of things, uh, technology uplifts, those kind of things that you need to do. You want to think about those all up in the, uh, up in the front end. So the next one is, as you can see, um, sometimes your information security budget may shrink if you do this and all of a sudden there aren't any credit cards left in the environment to steal, right? So you know, the stick of compliance is, is a mighty weapon and if you move, remove it from its rightful place, they might take away some of your money. So you know, overall, so what? Why do I want to do this? Well, thieves can't steal data that you don't have. Well, there went their Mercedes. Auditors can't audit what you don't have. There went my job, but I really want to do healthcare if anybody's got any, <laughs> any options there. 
Uh, I'm, and there are no breach fines if you don't have a breach. Those breach fines can get astronomical, uh, as we probably have seen. Also, another benefit is no CIOs, CEOs, or CISOs have to get fired if there's no breach. Is that too soon? Thanks, that's my time. <laughs>